Hello, my name is Gerard Seid. I'm the executive director of the ENO in Institute for Leadership. And uh, I'm very excited because uh, tonight with us is uh, Sammy Jo Small. And of course, she is a Olympian and a gold medal winning Olympian. Uh, welcome, Sammy Jo, to the, uh, to the Ivy School. We're very excited to, uh, to have you here today. Well, thanks so much for uh, having me. This is quite an experience. A uh, couple of questions, if I, uh, if I may. Um, your motto in life is, you don't always get to choose the role you play, but you get to choose how you play it. Can you explain that and perhaps give an example from your career? Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I don't think that it's been a motto that I've come to easily because a lot of things have happened to me and that has made me realize that, um, that you don't get to choose the role. Um, and sometimes we're placed in roles that we don't want to be in. And I think this happens in life, in sport, in family situations. Um, but it really is how you play that role. And um, I've had situations where you might regret how you play that role later. Um, you might re regret what you say in a situation. Um, but the, the moments for me that I'm most proud of are when I've taken a role that is difficult, that maybe people haven't wanted to be in, and I've played that to the best of my ability and really made an impact on the team and the success of the team. And um, one part that I, I talk about a lot in my speeches is about um, not getting to play in the Olympic final in 2002. And so basically my whole sporting career had uh, progressed towards this one moment that was gonna be the ultimate for me was to play in that championship final, to win the game and for everybody to jump on me. That was the way I dreamt my Olympic dream. That was the way I've trained. I pushed myself at, right up until the final hours when the coaches told me that I wasn't gonna get to play. And I was devastated. I was disappointed. I was upset. I was angry. I was everything you could possibly imagine in that moment. And um, I didn't know what to do. I mean, I didn't have sort of, I didn't have much to base it on. Um, but I did have some life lessons that I had learned throughout my life. And I guess at that moment, I realized that um, I had two choices and one I could feel the same way because I think in those situations a lot of times we feel sorry for ourselves. We, we don't want to be there. Uh, we don't want to be around people. Uh, but I realized that my team did need me. And I think a lot of things have sort of brought me to that one moment. But um, I think you never really know what you're training for. You never know what you're getting ready for. And for me, it's, uh, I thought I was getting ready for a physical endeavor, but it was, it was a mental, um, it was really a mental race for me. It was that ability to be there for my teammates when I just wanted to be somewhere else. And uh, so at the end of the game, when we won and I had you know, played my role and cheered my team on and tried to be as positive as I could, I realized that I did have an impact. And um, I think that that's the message I try to get across to people is that we all have an impact in everything we do. And we have an impact not only on ourselves, but the people around us. And what defines success for me is being proud of the way you play your role. Whether others see it as small or big, or it doesn't matter. It's playing your role to the best of your ability. Thank you. That's a great, uh, great lesson. Um, obviously, you're very much involved in, uh, in team sports. And if you uh, reflect on the, on the things you've done and you're still very active in, in team sports, um, what, um, what are the ingredients or the cornerstones of a successful team? Well, it's interesting because I've played on so many different teams. You would think that there would just be one, um, one component to success for a team. Um, I used to think when I was younger that it all had to do with being positive and um, maybe having the, the most talented players, but I've come to realize that that's not always the case. Um, you don't necessarily have to like your teammates. You don't necessarily have to be friends with your teammates, even though as women we all want to, and sometimes that creates problems on teams. Um, but at the end of the day, you have to respect your teammates. And I think when I look back at why Team Canada is so successful, um, to me, it it isn't necessarily the leadership that is defined by others. It isn't the head coach, it isn't the general manager. Um, I don't know that um, in other situations it, with different people, we might've had the same results. Um, so I don't, I don't necessarily attribute it to them, but I attribute it to the leaders. And I talk about leaders as, as very different, I think, than most others, and that it's each person has that leadership quality within them. Um, to respect the people around them and to see what they're doing and appreciate what they bring. Um, why we've been successful is, I mean, I could honestly sit in the dressing room before the final game and look at each player and know that they had become the absolute best hockey player they could, they could be. And it's because I watched them go through it and they watched me go through it and they were there to help me get up. They were there to kick me in the butt when I wasn't working hard enough. And we had enough respect for each other that we could come into the dressing room and be successful as a team. Um, and be moving in the same direction as well. And 
we had those, we just had that uncanny ability to be there for each other. And I really think that that's what defines success as a team is everybody is willing to do whatever role it takes so that on, in that day, on that moment, you're going to be successful. How do you cope with setbacks? And can you, can you give us an example? Well, setbacks are difficult because I think that um, as athletes, we're continuously going through setbacks, whether it's in a you know, weekly training program where it just, you just feel like you can't lift as much or go as fast or train as hard, um, to big moments where you know, maybe you're standing on the blue line watching the other team celebrate. And I've been there too, and it's not easy. Um, but as I get older, and I am older now, playing, being a female hockey player, still playing in the Canadian Women's Hockey League, still striving to win the Clarkson Cup, which is our ultimate championship. Um, I think that failures and setbacks um, tend to be seen more with a perspective eye now um, and seen as a growing experience. And that's how I see it. You know, I, I really think that each of my failures and each of my successes has defined me as a person. And uh, parents always ask me, you know, what, what makes a great goaltender? And I always say the ability to come back from failure. Because in my life, I've let in a million goals. Mm -hmm. Let's be honest, maybe two million, who knows. But um, it's that ability to put it behind you, to park it and get back and make the next safe. And I think that whether it's in the business world or whether it's in life, um, I just think it's that ability to forget, what, not necessarily forget what's happened. Because you, I mean, as a goaltender, I want to know what I did wrong but I also need to be focused on what's ahead. That, that will help me to make the next, next save. And every single goal I've let in has helped me. Sometimes I'm angrier than others. Um, sometimes my husband will tell you that uh, it's hard to talk to me on the way home, but at the end of the day, it is about perspective and that's, they're all teaching moments at the end of the day. All right, thank you, really appreciate it, Sammy Joe. Thank you so much. All right.